I really like this image. And my biggest problem with it is that it's not mine. I wish it was in my portfolio instead. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I really love this kind of stuff with reflected light. Uh, I imagine you shot this like somewhere in the Southwest in one of these sandstone canyons. Um, I've seen similar subject matter, but I really love the light in this and the contrast. The uh, color contrast is amazing. Really nice composition. What made you want to submit this one? Is there anything that you're hesitant with or do you have any kind of insecurity with it? Uh, it was a very special evening and outside of Moab, there's a creek which uh, runs alongside a side of a canyon which reflects the light down onto the creek. And uh, so it's really an ideal situation for uh, taking photos and I, I did crop this somewhat because it was kind of hard to, you know, the composition had to really think about it. Um, I think I did all right with it, but um, it's, um, I wanted to just stay within the reflection areas and the water coming through. And, um, and so that's sort of where it came from. And, um, but I'd be love to hear your thoughts and Bill's thoughts. So one of the first things I notice when I look at this that kind of distracts me and doesn't allow me to enjoy it as much is, you know, in scenes like this where you have this golden light and then you have shade, which is going to be like slightly blue, you get that great warm and cool color contrast. Mm -hmm. I feel like overall, um, and hopefully all of you have calibrated monitors so you can see correct colors on your screens. Otherwise, when we point out color things, you might not see what we're, we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But in this one, I, I can see like a slight magenta color cast where mm -hmm. the whole scene kind of has this uh, slight magenta tone. It's just by a couple points. So if you could slightly cool down the white balance and then also like move the tent slider, like one or two points towards the greens, uh, that would really pull away the tone of the reflected light, which is very warm. And mm -hmm. then the shaded areas that aren't receiving that reflected light, which should be cooler. So that will, that will help the scene by having a bit more complementary color and a little bit more color separation, I think. Hmm. Well, that's, uh, that's a very nice suggestion. I see exactly what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, it's yeah. mainly in the sandstone. It just looks slightly yes. purple. I agree. A little bit in um, the water too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's kind of all throughout the scene and that that'll just pull that tone of the water and the, and the sandstone away from each other to get even more depth mm -hmm. and, and nice pop in this one. Mm -hmm. um another thing i always look at are the edges and so mm -hmm. in this one yeah <laughs> what do you what do you notice about this what what do you why do you think i would circle that well everything else is pretty smooth and smooth um edges or smooth uh, walls and this is kind of sharp um it's not lighted it's dark um and it does kind of draw you away, draw you into that corner for something you don't really want. Mm -hmm. So I think something you could do is just darken like these soft highlights up here. So uh -huh. it's more subdued and then maybe even open this shadow a little bit. So it becomes more flat and it's not so contrasty and detailed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because yeah, this is all like very simple. Yes. And then this is a little bit more. I guess messy, I would say, in comparison <laughs> to the rest of the scene. Yeah. If there were rocks like that all around it, then they wouldn't stand out, right? But since right. everything else is very smooth and clean, that's right. kind of one part that's betraying the rest of the scene. And no, then some other little things I notice on the edges, like mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever use the spot heel tool or the cloning brush. Yes. You could just get rid of uh, some of these little things, like maybe this mm -hmm. little dark spot right here this is kind of just nitpicking but those are things that i would clone out in mind because everything else is very smooth very mm -hmm. even all along the edges um yeah i think like especially this one right on the edge how it's like a vertical line so it's parallel with the edge mm -hmm. it's kind of creating this like little rectangle and that kind of stuff always draws attention when lines are right next yeah. to the edges and they're perfectly straight and parallel just because they stand out right no, I agree with that entirely. Yeah. This is a beautiful photograph. I love the 
um, uh, overall effect of it, the potholes, the light. I love that the source of light is not included in the frame you zoomed in. Um, it kind of leaves some things to your imagination. Um, mm -hmm. I like the contrast between the, the hard rock and the moving water, and a couple of things come to mind. The light balance is something I think a lot about too, with kind of the brightness on the on the rock and a little darker in the water. I would probably, uh, with an adjustment brush, uh, whatever motion patterns are coming through, I would might uh, accent those a little bit and accent the flow going into the the rapid up above that circled area so that it's gets a real strong sense of flowing in that direction yeah so like you could you could raise the luminosity of these like white cap rapid rapid areas to kind of match this a little bit better is mm -hmm. that what you're saying bill so yeah it's more mm -hmm. yeah if i had an adjustment brush in lightroom i'd be i'd Got be kick, kicking up the whites mm -hmm. and maybe yeah little, and little clarity or something depending i but shoot first, i need first I know thing you, is to have those choices though to me the first thing is to have yeah. those choices. and bill and i both shoot a lot of reflections in water be it a canyon wall or some trees in yosemite and uh mm -hmm. a lot of the time the the reflected light you get in the water in the file it comes out a bit muted like here it's yeah. looking like slightly brown in some areas instead of like golden like this mm-hmm mm -hmm. Um, I would probably be using the adjustment brush as well to kind of raise the light, at least in this portion right here, yeah. to, to be a little bit closer to this. If you, if you go too much to where it's the same brightness as this, it might look strange, but you could right. definitely get some more light and contrast out of this that you have here. Got it. And I think that would, yeah. that would kind of help balance the scene a little bit better and tie it together more. Certainly the right part, upper portion is fairly you know, defined. And as you say, it's much softer along that whole curve. And it's a question of how much you want to change that. Mm -hmm. I think you could definitely bring it out a little bit, at least in this section here, mm -hmm. just to kind of balance off that right side a little. And by brightening up the water, you, you can be equated a little more in terms of brightness, tonal balance with, with the rock and the they take mm -hmm. equal import, importance. A lot of that, those choices of light or dark, pushing something back like the, the rock in the upper left is pushing it to, to not to take it out, but to push it back in, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. levels of attention. And the water uh, flowing around the rock is some part of this photograph. And then you, so you pull it up and give it more attention and, and it balances right. tonal, tonally with, with the rock uh, yeah because the water is like the whole movement of the scene that's yes. what gives it that sense of visual flow everything else is complementary to that i feel like those are all great suggestions um be fun to try uh, more i'll know. heal this little strip up here too in this pothole just to even it out mm. Cut, little oh, I see. yeah 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 just because near that top edge. So you just, you don't really want anyone looking here directly. I think I'd also darken the edge of the sandstone right here as well. Like, all, like see how the brightness here mm -hmm. is the same as here in the center. It's like just as bright. Yeah. If you could just darken the rock a little bit more on this whole edge, that mm -hmm. would just help keep the eye more in the center and keep it away from the edges a bit. Like over here, you got nice darks in the corner and the edge, but over here, mm -hmm. it's it's like a little too bright where it kind of pulls my eye off in that direction and I kind of follow it to the edge instead of being more pulled into the center in the other direction. Got it. Uh-huh. And most of the time in Ansel's printing, he burned burned down the edges. And yes, like Eric said, you want dirt burn, dirt burn down the bottom edge and make it darker because you're trying to play it up. But... Um, you know, you might, those the upper right edge and the, the right side. That makes perfect sense. I concur. <laughs> awesome. Any questions or anything, Fred? No, these are all very helpful suggestions. And um, 
you know, this was taken 10 years ago, but uh, be fun to work with it and see what, where I can come with some of these suggestions, see how different it will look. Uh, just working with what I have, I think it'll be interesting. And then from then on, taking more, more shots at the same time to particularly with flowing water. So nice. You know, sometimes there are lots of cool elements in a scene, but that doesn't imply that they all work together to create uh, the best composition possible. And so the main elements in this one that I see are the moon, uh, the reflection, and then these different layers from the water, the clouds of these like subtle different tones of blue, which are really nice that repeat through the scene. And I feel like everything down in this section is very cohesive. It all blends really nicely. I love how it looks. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I, I feel like having the moon in here for two reasons isn't actually improving the scene. And what it's actually doing is instead of enjoying these subtle things down here, it's a little too attention grabbing where it's really pulling me up to the top fifth of the image where it's in. And so it feels like it's kind of pulling me away from the rest of the scene instead of pulling me into the scene. And so when I saw this, my first thing, which will bring up another point after I do this, was to exclude the moon. Even though it's really cool and it looks nice. But then if you do this, what you end up with is everything here becomes much more pronounced. All these little tones, all these details, there's nothing drawing your attention away from them and you can appreciate them more. And I also like cropping it like this so that you know, you have this white band up here. And if you keep that in, that's going to kind of do the same thing. Now the brightest part of the image is at the top of the frame once again. So I, I think you'd have to get rid of that and just end it with this nice, dark, cool blue to kind of frame the scene and keep the eye nestled and keep it more in the center. And now you could even like uh, play with the tonality here and like increase the contrast a little bit, maybe brighten this band of clouds slightly just to get a little bit more separation and interest in there. But what I also love about this, maybe even more so than eliminating the distraction of having the moon in there, is now there's this mystery where the scene is very, it's much less literal. You don't know what this reflection is from because you can't see the source. It feels much more mysterious. And now the scene all of a sudden has a lot more mood and emotion to it. In my, in my opinion, it becomes much more expressive. And so hopefully you can relate with that a little bit and I'm not trying to impose my vision on you too much, but <laughs> I felt like that really strengthened the scene just from getting rid of that. And that's, that's kind of my whole theory. A lot of the time, less is more and not having those clues be so readily available and have it be less literal. It actually makes for a more interesting and compelling image that is very intriguing and causes you to ask questions rather than all, rather than all the questions just being answered from showing too much. What do you think about that, yeah. Jason? I, I, yeah, I really struggled with this image when I made it. I was pretty sure I had something there, but. Um, and you I might feel like I, you have to include the moon because it is like right there within your grasp. It's like, why wouldn't you? But if you really think yeah. about it in terms of visual elements. No, you're right. Yeah, and there was a lot of color differences too. Like, so the top of the, where the moon was, was a lot warmer uh, than the rest. So much so that I actually put a linear grad there kind of increase temperature or decrease the temperature a little bit to kind of blend it in because I really like the blues. But um, yeah, no, this is, I didn't really can even consider taking the moon out. Yeah, it might seem kind of a for like a, a rule or like a forbidden thing. Like, you know, if, if you have this awesome thing there, why would you want to exclude it? But I always think of my images in terms of visual elements rather than the literal objects. I don't think of trees. Right the moon, mountains, I think of shapes, design, lines, patterns. And when you break it down like that, it becomes much more obvious as to what should be included and what should be excluded because these themes start forming and you have a, a clearer concept with the scene overall. So like, honestly, when it's cropped like this, like I love the scene now and it, it feels so unique and so creative. It feels very um, original. 
Whereas before it just felt like you were looking out at a lake and you, and you took a vertical photo, right? It feels much more straightforward and obvious. This feels much right. more intentional, artistic, um, to me, at least personally, how do you feel about it, Richard? I think this crop allows the viewer to interpret it on their own level and it's not, uh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's much more abstract, of course, but it's also very evocative and thought provoking. So I agree with your points about that. And then, you know, it is kind of, you know, including the moon is, is a natural thing to do, but I think that's what you've shown here has how you can redirect attention to something more abstract and engage the viewer on multiple levels is nice. Yeah, that's good. I took a lot of variations of this one just because the water was changing so much. So, I mean, a lot of the other ones I took didn't have this kind of cool pattern in the water or the waves were too much and you couldn't really see it. So, uh, but having that now, you can, I like that. Um, it makes me it draw pronounces. a lot more to, so those clouds come out a lot more too that that was actually a fog bank an ice fog bank out mm -hmm. there and i did increase the luminosity of that a little bit but not too much but yeah now i see it like this if i did it even more i think it would maybe balance the image a bit i think i cloned that little dark spot that becomes more obvious when you crop oh. it down in the foreground yeah the little floating it's... in the water yeah it's a chunk of ice probably but uh, this one yeah what do you think would you take that out yeah I, I would clone out like all these little uh a lot of times when you shoot water you get these things that kind of look like sensor spots or something right I, I usually clean those up i like the way yeah, the water dances like... down through the uh, the reflections dance down through the the water ripples something i'd be tempted to try it'd be worth experimenting with is to slightly warm up this scene now just a tiny bit because you could get more tonality and separation. Um, you could, you could, everything is like blue, but there are different tones of blue. And so if you slightly warm it up, you could get even more separation of those different tones and it could be a little bit more interesting. Maybe it does look nice how it is right now. So that's just like something I would experiment with. It'd be worth trying. So anyone else have a comment on that? Um, it's funny when you first said um, that you would take the moon out, when you said it, I kind of, oh, you know, it kind of hurt. <laughs> You're offended. <laughs> but then when you cropped it, when you cropped it, it really looks beautiful. It's such a difference. Um, and that's something that I've always struggled with is that um, many times, I'm not making the distinction between a snapshot and, and the creative uh, treatment. And um, I just realized that right now. <laughs> so I, I really love the cropping. Yeah. Hans, I feel like you're really great with these kinds of scenes, like with all your sand abstracts and like really chaotic stuff that you somehow are able to organize in a nice way. So I don't know if you want to start with this one. Is there anything that jumps out at you? Yeah, what is uh, striking is, is that it almost looks like a topographic map of a, of a, mount, a mountain range uh, where you see, a, um, the, you know, or like an aerial of badlands in Utah or something, which is here in, in a smaller scale on a tree trunk. It's quite amazing how things can look uh, similar depending on the view of distance. Uh, um I, I i like that a lot um um there's a lot of things going on here uh but i think the upper left is a little bit anonymous maybe we could uh concentrate the image by cropping a little bit on the left uh and maybe uh, also a little bit on the top let's see yeah when i was looking at it initially i felt like the like a lot of the left side and then some of the top, it just felt kind of empty where like all the most interesting lines and uh, intricate complex stuff was near the bottom. There, yeah. It's like a Van Gogh sky. Yeah. It, it's really interesting. Yeah, I think you, here you have a more concentrated composition. I, I think it helps 
Um, I don't know if we, if you should um, increase the contrast even further and darken the darker areas uh, a little bit more. Yeah, give it more snap, a little bit more. Make it contrast. pop out more. The highlights look like they're like as bright as they can go. Yeah, yeah. But you can darken. You, you cannot make them brighter, but but the rest, the midtones and the shadows can become a little bit darker and, and the contrast uh, and then you'll get more color as well if you don't do it in uh, luminosity so yeah i think here you have a more interesting composition now than you had initially yeah yeah for i think sure. i think the blue is more pronounced now too like the warm and cool mm -hmm. uh just having less of that empty stuff now that color contrast is a lot more visible because this other area was more gray Whereas this cooler side, only having this by itself with only the reddish brown down here, like that just brings the color into play a lot more in this scene too. I, I would uh, also darken the upper uh, upper right area a little bit. Uh, so darken the shadows just separately, uh, that area even more. Uh, even uh, from almost from the middle, uh, from the top middle to the top left uh, slightly it just you could do that quick and dirty with with a, a what do you call burning tool it would just burn down the shadows a little bit further up not not that uh, just the upper area just not that right. much yeah. uh, just like the edge yeah yeah like that I would burn down, yeah, down with uh, burn down the, just the shadows to to kind of uh, uh, get a natural frame of the image on the top. Now it's kind of leaking up there. It's it's a little bit too. It's like bright. the brightest part of the blue. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, so yeah. the eye will uh, stay inside the image if if you just darken that. Yeah, make it more Makes like sense. this. I would say. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Totally agree. Yeah. You could actually uh, darken shadows all all the way around the image. Uh, to create some kind of vignetting, just just a little bit. I think it would do the image, uh, uh, help the image a lot, actually. So you don't, yeah, it, it's nice That's to have true. a little darker, uh, darker frame, the darker outskirts of the image. Yeah, there's there's like never no reason not to, because like this, there's usually the most important part. So like. Yeah, this area down here kind of draws too much attention. Mm. This could definitely Same be darker. Area. And then the right side is starting to feel yeah. too open now, so I would darken that too. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. So just like a general vignette. I can't show that on here. Like a, mm. I have to do it rectangular, but you can see the effect, how it just really pulls your eye in the center now. Mm. Yeah, see the difference now without that crop, Alberto? Yeah, definitely. I, I didn't, you know, initially the left side, there was, um, I'd cloned out some of the, there was like squiggles there that were a bit more pronounced. And I actually took it out because I thought it might be, you know, distracting. But um, I think in this view, like you said, the left is a little barren. So it kind of, it's not that interesting when you compare it to the rest. So I totally, I totally agree with that. Something else that bothers me with having the left side not cropped out is this line is like right in the middle of the frame right now this like vertical line so it's kind of dividing it but then once we cropped it that you that like i didn't even notice this line anymore but right now it's like really visible just how it's like in the middle mm. yeah for sure what kind of wood is it uh so it's a dead eucalyptus tree that has had it's kind of all its bark kind of just shed off um mm. there's a little eucalyptus grove behind my apartment so it was really mm. close to home as well which was nice I was considering like some rotations too, but I think the way it is like this, once it's cropped, it looks the best. Vertical would look a little weird. Yeah, thanks guys. Yeah, man, nice one. Do you have any other questions or anything, Alberto? Like what was your main reason for submitting it? Yeah, so this is part of like a project that I'm working on, which is kind of like a close to home thing where I'm photographing like little details near where I live at the beach and in this in this grove of forest that's near me. Um, 
so I, I'm not quite finished with this one. So I wanted to know like what could be improved. It wasn't really quite like done. Some of the other images I submitted were more like final in my eye, but this one was definitely kind of a work in progress. So I wanted to hear exactly what you what you all just said was like what how how to make it the best possible image. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely liked the texture and I thought it was interesting enough, but I wanted to make sure there wasn't anything like, you know, overly wrong with it that would make it not work. Sure. Awesome. It's amazing how, how uh, similar it looks to, to uh, an aerial, almost like a satellite image of... of uh, like a storm or something? Yeah, or a badlands or whatever it is, you know, like yeah. or almost, almost like a topographic map. Yeah, yeah, totally. Thank you.